everybody my name is fred minnick i am a drinks writer and i have a podcast called the fred minnick show where i interview musicians and drink with them we are flipping the switch a little bit tonight mark valonga from nothing more is a bit of a, a beer connoisseur and he's taking lead tonight we're gonna walk through a craft beer tasting mark how you doing i am well i'm doing good Doing very good. I'm, I'm ready to have some tasties. Are you ready for not drinking whiskey, Fred? <laughs> well, I, I uh, often peer, uh, pair uh, beer with whiskey. And I'll tell you, that's one of the that's one of the things that I look for in a beer. It's like, all right, what would pair really, really well with the whiskey? Or what would quench okay. my thirst after having a lot of whiskey? So that's yeah. why, like, I typically, I lean, either really lean toward, like, heavy beers uh, I'm a big fan of oatmeal stouts, and I like lagers mm. and, and pilsners because they're nice, clean, and crisp. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, pilsners are good for resetting things, honestly. If I'm having something super fruity or super flavorful and I need to kind of skip from one genre to another, it's a, it's good to have like a pilsner right in between. So I, I hear you there for cleansing the palate. Yeah. Now, what do you drink? What do you drink before you go on the stage? actually not beer at all <laughs> i wish i could do beer i used to but it as you know you know beer it sometimes really makes you feel bloated so and as well as singing you know uh it's just uh you know you end up burping a lot so you know i go up to sing my backup parts and it's like bleh, you know burp all over the microphone that doesn't help so I, I, I tried wine for a bit but that was a little too pinky out you know i can't like rock hard and like be offensive or whatever you know mm -hmm. <laughs> uh with wine so actually the drink of choice is weird but it's typically jameson and pedialyte okay <sighs> P pedialyte huh that's is that to keep you like energized and keep the electrolytes moving yes absolutely so it's it's good it's like i have you know the the liquor the whiskey to take the edge off and kind of you know to feel it really get me out of my head and i can speak for the other guys too that we all typically do a shot before going on stage um but during stage yeah i like to have uh you know whiskey and pedialyte or gatorade if there isn't pedialyte around um it's 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 okay. It's not the best, but honestly, uh, just not doing carbonation is important just for mm. singing. You know, otherwise I'll just be burping all over the place. Okay. All right. So what would be, what would be the worst place to have a burp in one of your, uh, backup <laughs> vocal spots? What would, what would be the worst absolute spot to have the burp? Man, that's, a, that's a good question. I'd say, um, so, uh, first track off of, uh, stories we tell ourselves is, do you really want it? And there's a lot of like yell screamy vocals um, that Dan and I both do during the verses. Um, so that's that's definitely a spot because um, it's it it's often and where our vocal is almost as present as the lead vocal. So definitely right there. <laughs> how what how would Johnny react if if he if you he got a good old fashioned beer burp on the in the middle of it? What what, what would he do? Would he get like would he be like, what's up, Mark? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. He to he totally gave me the death glare. You know, it's like, <laughs> ooh, you know, the, the, the P-Funk, you know, George Clinton, like, Pew, gotcha. <laughs> but in all honesty, I'm pretty sure I don't exist in his mix, in his in-ear mix. So it, it's <laughs> so I'm not sure he would hear it anyway. <laughs> Got it. So we are getting a lot of really good questions in the in the chat. And by the way, we are streaming on my channel, on YouTube, as well as my Facebook, and all the Nothing More platforms. So we're on, we're uh, combined. We're on D Live, Periscope, two YouTube channels, two Facebook uh, pages, an app, and Twitch. I, did I did I miss anything? <laughs> I, I think you covered all the bases. That's, nice. that's pretty pretty damn good. Man, technology is so, so complicated. So Ashley, Ashley says she hears Pedialyte is good for hangovers. I can oh, concur with that. That's true. I, yes, absolutely. 100%. And uh, uh, John Woodbury is coming in on YouTube, says he's really stoked for the new album and wants to know when it will be released. Uh, I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> so the projected plan, only a year from now, 
hopefully, you know, fingers crossed for sure. Um, ideally, we'd love to have new music out something like March, a uh, couple songs or so. We, we have the two projected songs that we think are really kind of encompass a lot of the album in focus, in full focus right now to take all the way to completion. Um, we just wrapped up drums out in uh, near El Paso in Tornillo, Texas uh, at Sonic Ranch, six studio. Um, really, really cool. And they really take the whole COVID uh, and everything very seriously. You're completely isolated in a desert. They feed you. They, you know, we didn't leave the entire time. So that was pretty sick. Um, but yeah, drums are done and maybe half of the guitars and bass are done. Some of the vocals are done, um, but we're slow. We're not tool, but we're slow. <laughs> well, we are getting some comments in here. Like, I wish I had some uh, some of the nothing more beer. And I think that's probably a good time for us to show everybody what we're what we've got tonight. I'm, I'm really excited about this. Let's do this. Absolutely. I am, too. You know. I just really, with traveling and everything, you know, I can, and as you, as you grow in your career, you can start asking for more specific things. So asking for like specific local beer um, on our hospitality list um, became a really cool thing and a way to like start sampling, you know, along with obviously on the day off, you know, trying to hit up a brewery in the area um, and, you know, meet up with friends and whatnot which hopefully we can all enjoy again you know um as traveling comes back into our our lives next year i hope but we'll we'll see anyway yes uh so all this stuff is uh, available through craft shack um this my beer picks basically is a monthly thing and you can pick up all of these guys through there um it's again, I'm kind of new to this. So we're just starting. Ideally, it'd be something that we can all have the same beers on the same day, have a lazy Sunday, fun day, and you know, have a good time. Um, but yeah, Shaq, uh, just search my name or nothing more, and you should find it. This first beer that we're gonna do is out of Quebec. Um, it's a uh, it's a Megadeth beer. Here, I'll uh, switch the old camera here, I'll and you, uh, yeah. There you go. He's got it too. He's got it going down. But yes, it's this Megadeth beer. I'm pretty pumped about it. Although I must say, I have yet to have a beer um, from a band that I like. So we shall see. Let's do this, Fred. Let's do it. Oh, yes. I'm pouring the goodies. And I'm shrinking, I'm drinking straight from the can. Yep. You know, there's, there's, there's methods, you know, um, <laughs> uh, I definitely prefer to air it out. I'm sure you, you know, you have your things with whiskey, of course. Um, but, uh, here's definitely more flavors become alive as, uh, they breathe more and kind of warm up in some cases. Um, but I don't need to get snooty anyway. Here, well, cheers, Fred. I cheers just, indeed. You I, actually, you you, you bring up great points. The reason why I I don't I'm, we're not doing it from a well, well I'm not doing it from a, from a glass is basically my glassware you know is all whiskey <laughs> so I've got I've got cock, I've got cocktail glassware I've got a few I've got a few nice um, you know beer glasses but to be honest with you um, I didn't I, di I don't have the uh, the beer glassware that I should. So cheers. No, you're you're okay. There's yeah, cheers. Here we go. Let's do this. Mm. Ooh. Oh, that hits the spot. I'm that's good. This is the best band beer I've had thus far. Wow. That's good. Way to go, uh Unibrow. That's great, man. Uh I'm definitely a fan of the sour. Our ones are difficult a lot of the times because they get real funky and you, you have a lot of the the weird uh kind of bacteria uh mm -hmm. kind of lurking around um but this is this is good this is real nice i'm i'm a fan now gene jeffries uh coming from uh the nothing more facebook page asking some people swear by warm beer do you prefer your beer cold or room tip and i will say i know a lot of beer judges that do judge it by um judge it warm yeah 
that's that's interesting. Um, I'm I'm all over the place. You know, uh, a lot of stouts are better when they've been heated up. Uh, and I'd agree with that. And then obviously you have, you have, you know, a lot of terrible beer is a lot better cold. So you can't even taste it and it just goes down. <laughs> so there's you, this, I think it's great cold, um, super refreshing. Um, not into the sour beers. You should get into the sour beers. Um, this one's uh, the pucker is, it's pretty subtle. But uh, it's it's still slightly there, um, which I like. It it's it's good. Again, the best band beer. Way to go, Megadeth. Dave Mustaine making it happen. I like it. But I mean, are we surprised though? I mean, Me Megadeth always is bringing it. You know, they're not uh, they're they're, they're not going to put out something that's you know cookie cutter bullshit. There you go. There you go. I I agree. So. Again, uh, this this live stream that we're doing, uh, mine is called A Few Good Brews. It happens monthly, um, and you can see all these and watch them again. Um, normally, it's exclusive. This is a special one we're doing, um, but you can see all them via our app on uh, The Few. You can just search it in the App Store, you know, nothing more on Google Play or whatever. At the interwebs tell you to download the informations on so the cyber webs um all right yeah yeah you know what one so other Fred. thing one other thing mark uh i'm producing a uh a virtual festival and we're showcasing your your beer picks so uh that festival's repeal day the repeal day expo and you've got your own little booth in there where and this will you know this will be replaying and um and we're selling we're selling the beer through craft shack as well at mm -hmm. the festival so and you're our only beer. You know, you're our only beer area. Oh, wow. Yeah. Damn, that's awesome. That's that's very cool. I'm honored. Um, I'm really excited. And speaking of repeal, so if you could give a little background on that. I know some about it for me and for everybody else listening on yeah. what repeal is and its so, significance. So repeal day, so de December 5th is the... It's basically the alcohol holiday for repealing prohibition. The alcohol industry is always celebrated December fifth. It's like our national holiday, and you know the, the I think the consumer world, you know, takes advantage of like St. Patty's Day and New Year's Eve. But those in like like the trenches of the alcohol industry, you know, we celebrate December fifth, and it's also a reminder of like, you know, that any time governments can change their mind about what is uh allowed for consumption and you know mm -hmm. in in banning particular things like there's no reason marijuana should be banned you know there's no there's no reason marijuana should be banned there's no reason uh we should have restrictions on um you know like things like like how how far away a liquor store can be from another liquor store there's like so many ridiculous laws in this country that continue and repeal day is kind of a day that reminds us that our our government's pretty screwed up, especially when it comes to, you know, things like alcohol and, and, and marijuana. So we uh, every December 5th, uh, I'm usually a part of a party, but because we can't get together and do anything this year, I decided to like throw a party in a in a virtual world. So it's like playing a video game. But instead of like you know shooting people or driving cars, you can drive a boat. Uh, you are you're getting <laughs> you're getting whiskey and you're take, checking out educational materials uh, inside a world called Deggy World. So that, yeah, that's it. Go to RepealDayExpo.com. That's so cool. There you go. Yeah, mm. that's awesome, man. Boy, this yeah, one's I'm, this I'm really real excited. I'd actually. Yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say this one's really warming up to me, and I better, I better stop because that's easy drinking, you know. <laughs> nice, that's good. Um, yeah, I was just gonna say I'm actually, you know, uh, surprising with the history that's happened and what a big deal uh, prohibition was. Um, I'd actually never heard of repeal or its anniversary being in December um, or anything like that. So this is really cool. Um, yeah, I figured there should be some sort of holiday. Um, yeah, that's that's awesome. I'm really excited about going to that expo awesome. and everything and, and checking it out. 
So very cool. Cheers to you. Props cheers, for doing cheers that. Indeed. Cheers indeed. Cheers mm-hmm. indeed. So I think we got a, we, we got a, we got a few here. Uh oh, there comes yeah. the burpiness. Uh-oh. Right, yeah. <laughs> good, thing I'm, good thing I'm not doing backup. Oh, yeah. Not yet. Well, just wait. Next time, louder than life. You're doing them all with me, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then nothing more gets booed off the stage, never to return to Louisville, because some guy in an got did shitty backup vocals. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yeah. They go to, go to War would have a whole new meeting. So... I, you know, I, I talked about, we were talking about this yesterday. I, I'm just in love with the name Belching Beaver, you know, and this is the oh, yeah. Mexican, you know, chocolate peanut butter stout. I, and I know this is not necessarily the, you know, if we're, if we're doing this order based on palate, we, we don't go to Belching Beaver next, but because of my fascination right. with it, um, is it okay if we go to the Belching Beaver? <laughs> It is totally okay if we do that. As you can see, check out right there, this Belching Beaver. Check him out. There's also the Peanut Butter Stout, which they have as well, which is super tasty. But I had not had this uh, Mexican hot chocolate one uh, before. So let's make this happen. Mm. Nice thickness, not too thick. Um, Man, looking awesome. It's great. Oh my God! All right, here we go. Ooh, man! Yeah, that's great. That's got uh, a lot of the roasty, toasty smokiness of a normal stout, but there's a nice peanut butter and it kind of coming through. This is uh, this reminds me of like a s'mores with like peanut hmm. butter. This is like I concur. This is wacky. <laughs> I I don't know if I would say that this is total Mexican hot chocolate. I feel like there needs to be more like yeah. nutmeg or cinnamon. Yeah, but this, this yeah, is, I mean, it's still it's, great. It, it's interesting, but interesting isn't always good, you know. <laughs> I gotcha. What what is the most uh, or top five, the most interesting in the same sense, or bourbon. Oh, okay. So I'll give you some of the descriptors I've given for for whiskeys over the years. I've said uh, something. One of <laughs> one of them smelled like a dead cat. Um, one tasted like burnt plastic. One one uh, smelled and tasted like brute cologne. Um, Oh, man. And then one was like, um, one smelled like that. Do you remember when you were a kid and they put like sawdust over, like a kid like threw up on the playground and they put that sawdust over it? It, it smelled. It smelled. I like do that. not remember that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh golly. Uh, I, I, yeah. Basically, it's it smelled like puke. Uh, but uh, yeah, there there is some. I mean, when it comes to making alcohol. There's a lot of directions you can take something, and they're not yep. all, and they're not always good, you know. I believe that I've I've had some terrible beers before. In general, like I, I don't know if you're this way. I'll always try any and everything. I'm mm-hmm. just really curious, and I, I love sampling, and I love kind of sharing and and you know experience really in in life with all food, with all drink. Um, so e- even if I, I had this, God, this uh, Michelada beer, like um, I'm not normally a fan of Micheladas, so that's mm-hmm. also it. But as soon as I cracked it, it was just like, oh, God, the whole room was just like stanky. <laughs> so uh, I, I hear you. Burnt plastic, uh, puke. Yeah, not not always good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I and, and the thing is, it's like when you – when you kind of like try to taste everything, you're going to get the bad stuff, you know? And, and when it comes, when it comes to beer, I have found that like so many bad beers are just based on bad storage. You know, there's not really a lot that are just overwhelmingly awful. They're just, you like one more than the other, but like when you get that skunky beer note, because 
you get it. That's the worst. <laughs> that's, that's one of the worst possible experiences you can have with a drink. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I think some people like their skunk, you know, they, they, they do they enjoy having it around. So <laughs> I still can't believe that. Sorry. That right. Heineken is still like number one beer in the whole world. Cause I, I'm sorry. I'm just not a Heineken guy. I will say though, having been in Amsterdam and having mm -hmm. it there, uh, it's, it is better. And a lot of that skunkiness actually doesn't exist yeah. uh, for whatever reason, I guess maybe, I don't know, something's off here or in shipping or whatever it is, but they're definitely different. I will say that. I went to, I went to a, uh, a Heineken's, uh, brewers conference where I got to meet their brewers, their uh, all their brewmasters and their cell staff and everything. And and like, you know, I'll tell you what they were serving, sure and the shit wasn't what I was buying at the grocery store. Uh, <laughs> they, what they were serving and then they were doing like their uh, you know, like what Stella Artois does in the commercials with the little uh, and it was um, that beer was amazing. And so, yeah, uh, I think so. There, there's a lot of variables that can, you know, lead to a bad beer experience, you know, bad taps, bad storage, you know, the, the beer makers only is only one of them. And, and Heineken, Heineken, you know, I kind of agree with you that it, it's, it's consistently a, a, a shit beer. Um, but, <laughs> But when we, I love that you say that, and you've been there, yeah, and met a lot of these brewmaster guys, and you're like, yeah, it's shit. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. Uh, but like, hey, you're honest. It's true. But what? But I, but I look at it like this: if I am having to make a choice between uh, Bud Light, Heineken, Coors Light, Tecate, uh, which for some Man. reason those are those four beers tend to be together. I I would go yeah. Tecate one, Coors Light, two Heineken, Bud Light. You know, so there is something I would drink Heineken over. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that that's a good compliment right there. <laughs> it's the second worst of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Now here's uh we we have a really nice question that came in uh through the chat and I think it could actually lead to uh, our next tasting if you want to take it that way. Uh Hunter Pruitt on yeah. on your YouTube asked a question, have you had any good meads? Now I actually wrote a book on mead and I'm fascinated with the history of mead. I'm curious, do you are you uh, are you a mead fan? I am a fan. I am not super experienced in mead. Maybe I've had you know, between, I don't know, 20 and 30 different types. Um, and it's typically it's maybe a little too sweet for me, but like anything, it's like, uh, I don't know, you continue the search, you continue trying and you might find one you gravitate towards. My older brother is actually, man, he's, he, he's so into beer. He's so into just food and, and beverage. Um, and, and we actually have a walnut orchard, uh, north of San Francisco, hmm. and he, he's he's made his own mead there before. He hasn't distributed or whatever. It's just you know been for his friends. Um, he's made mead. He's made beer. Um, and in time, it'd be sweet to have a brewery up there or a meadery. Um, but I, I see the pictures of his mead, and it's man, it's it's very different than any other mead I feel like I've had. It's like very thick. And oh, I mean, I, right. Comes bet, from honey. So yeah, I bet he's, uh, I bet it's, uh, I bet he's doing short fermentations. Is he doing, do you know mm. about that? Is he doing any kind of like uh filtering at all or. Uh, that that's what it is. I bet. I, I don't think it's filtered. I think it's all unfiltered stuff. Cause there's, there's so much uh, of the legs kind of around the glass uh, that, that you see and, and the, the sediment, you know, that's in there a lot. Well, you know, um, I think what you need to do, you need to get your brother on here and let's just grill him. Let's let have him send have <laughs> him send us his mead and then and then you get some I'm sure at some point in your childhood he did something really shitty to you 
and this is, this this could be some payback. There we go. Yeah, all all this resentment over all the years. This is it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get you. <laughs> oh gosh. No, Alex is awesome, and uh, and we actually did. Uh, we started selling some beard oil um, via nothing more, hmm. and it, it was all through through Alex, through my older brother, and through the family farm out there. Uh, just ground up walnut oil mixed with, you know, some other oil, sandalwood and stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, he, he, he's always doing so many cool things out there. Um, and he totally got me into a lot of this weird beer stuff, mm -hmm. which I'm like super stoked and pretty addicted to, to nice. be honest. <laughs> well, you know, you know your stuff. By the way, Michael Thompson in the chat on YouTube says he has a little bit of that beard oil. I'm a big fan of beard oil. Oh, that's oil. Nice. Yeah, that stuff's... Uh, Thank you, Michael. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like, I like oh, the beard good. oil. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's good stuff. It ke keeps it smelling nice, for sure. And it's not too dry, and, you know, you don't have flakes everywhere, typically. Um, all right, I am moving on. Let's do this uh, wasp of bees. You know, I know we were talking, you were talking about mead. Mm. Um, this is not a mead, though. <laughs> it is... Uh, a an IPA. It's a DDH, which means double dry hopped IPA. As you can see, yep, Fred's showcasing that she is. And uh, I am too. I'm very excited about this one. It's got really good reviews. Um, let's have some of this. Oh, oh yes. yes. Listen to that sound. That is what you want. That is the, that is the sound of glory. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, damn. So good. Damn. So good. A, wasp of, right. a wasp of bees just dropped the mic up in here. And this is <laughs> this is friggin' delicious. I wanna I wanna stop the whole thing right now and turn this thing off and we just start talking a you know, talking about life and everything. This is good. Dude, this is this is really good. Um, it's it's a great IPA. Um, got everything you want from an IPA, but a lot. I feel like the offensive nature that a lot of people don't like in the IPAs um, doesn't really exist in this. It's it's thick. It's hazy, as you can you can see. You know, uh, uh, you know. So it's it's thicker. Oh man, yeah, good, good hop taste in there. That's delicious. You know, I find that a lot of hops, like you know, especially the double IPAs, and uh, a lot of these can come over too hoppy, uh, too grapefruity, especially if they're American hops. And this one just is, um, you know, it is. If you're someone who likes pilsners, you like lagers, you're gonna find this. This doesn't have that offensive hop nature and. But if you are a hop fan and you have and you appreciate nuance, this has it. And I'm just thinking from a, a pairing perspective. This I think this would pair really, really well with a with a nice salmon or maybe, you know, Ooh. or or maybe some sushi. You know, this is like nice. this. This has like one of those like flavors and textures that I think that just would go incredible with any type of fish. That's awesome. That is one thing I've I've yet to get into. I think I ruined a uh, beer a couple days ago over Thanksgiving because it was like, oh, it was awesome. It was this uh, barrel aged like tequila stout type thing, mm -hmm. and it was tasting great. And then I had some turkey, and it was like, no, then <laughs> ruined my beer. That's for yeah. sure. Um, in time, I think uh, I will develop this uh, the pairing for sure. Yeah, but uh, yeah, when it, when it like to... you were talking about the American hops. Sorry, go for it. No, no, go talk about the hops. Okay, I was just going to talk about these are New Zealand hops. Um, it's a uh, yeah, re really cool that uh, they were able to do that um, with the Wasp of Bees North Park, um, which is out of uh, St. Louis, I think. Um, really cool, not too many check-in but uh really really you or you know you were kind of getting at like a
Are you there? I am. You were coming in a okay. little broken up there. The technology, okay. the cyber webs, um, you know, the uh, Heineken, uh, I'm, I'm told from my security <laughs> team that the that the Heineken, um, you know, police have uh, started working with the Russians to tap into this feed, so. <laughs> there you go. I think you're right. So um, when you when you when you're done with the show, do you go to a nice? What kind of beer do you go to, or what do you drink after a show? That's a good question. Um, man, honestly, so much of my go-to is what have I not had before? Um, in general, I do like to have like a light to dark sort of tra transition some just starting with like a 15 percent you know barrel aged stout um it is nice to jump start it sometimes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um but uh man honestly after this i will finish all of these beers and i'm not drinking them all right now because uh yeah i'd be wasted and we're just giving, given, uh, you know, the, the taste and the goodness. And if you like uh, any of these, you can purchase them via Craft Shack. Uh, you know, the novel I've been working on, you know, beginning, middle, and end. Oh, you know, good stuff. Family guy fan. I love it. You know it. I, we you get, know it. Oh, wait. Are you a South Park fan, too? Oh, you kidding me? Of course. We, we could probably have entire conversations between, like, South Park, you know, comments and like in family guy i swear like half of my life is like dictated by those two shows and it's they're so <laughs> they're so good and they're so accurate with everything yeah yeah they really are i i really enjoy how this for you know is uh like the newspaper of when we were kids for our parents mm -hmm. you know with far side and uh the satirical nature of it all like these this is the in south park and other really funny cartoon adult shows you know i know it's cool it's the it's it's the to me it is the it is the absolute um it's the absolute best capture of our present state as a country they they really mm. are mm. now have you ever had yeah. I know, I know, like Adult Swim, and I, I know they like to do stuff with with bands. Have you ever gotten to do like a cartoon or anything? Mark, I think we lost Mark here. So I'm going to. Uh, I'm gonna, hopefully, he will. There he is. You back? Yeah, I heard you this whole time. Oh, uh, I think the the damn Heineken, you know, they they're right. on it. I know, right? Um. Like they're <laughs> <laughs> they're on it, bastards. Yeah, uh, I think if I idle too long, I think uh, my computer's like I'm. T so may maybe that's happening. Um, but uh, I was asking you via nothing more, like the this cartoon show thing, or Sorry, maybe I missed some of the questions. Yeah, so I was like, you know, what are the things that these, like, uh, there's a lot of cartoons that a lot of bands get approached by, like, Adult Swim, and and some of these types of cartoons. Have, have you gotten to, like, how much have you gotten to do in the in the cartoony world? Like, maybe maybe there's a Family uh, Guy appearance in, in the future. Oh, geez, man, that would be... That's definitely a milestone in making it, if you will. Uh, no, we, we've never been approached by any of that. I think like some people have written whole novels and scripts from, you know, albums and and and, and lyrics and things that they've they've seen. Um, but no, I I haven't. We we haven't been approached by anything like that. Although there may be in the future, kind of with things we're doing via the app mm -hmm. um, and our this the mathematical logistical systems, uh, basically the symbols that you see 
um, that are associated, you know, uh, right there on the screen under our name. Um, we are using a lot of those to kind of do this interesting um, uh, uh, card type of thing into where it like sort of places you into uh, a category to where it's like your symbol is this guy and this is why type of thing. So it's sort of horoscope like um, Johnny's getting really excited about all this stuff and into exploring it. Um, and I think we may come up and uh, actually do kind of like a comic sort of type of thing to where um, we can explore a lot of this symbolism uh, stuff. Um, right on. I'm so, not sure. Okay, so cool. We, I we, wasn't sure if you're Yeah, yeah, we st we're still getting you. Uh, we do have some nice questions coming in on the chat. Uh, and a, just a general comment here from Feta Terraza. Uh, hey, uh, Mark, big hug from Mexico. Hope nothing more back in Mexico. And hope to see you guys back in Mexico in the near future. So Mexico is a great place to play, is it not? Yeah, it's it's been awesome. That was actually our last show uh, that we have played. It was like right around this time, actually Thanksgiving weekend last year. So it's been a whole freaking year since we've played a show, which is really weird. Um, wow. But uh, and it was a blast. Go Mexico City. You were sick. Um, I hope we can do it again soon. <laughs> And That's Cool Running is wanting to know what is in your background. And I'll, I'll, I will admit, I was wondering what that little oval thing is but to your right, to your back right. Right. Yeah, it's it's a spaceship that I have. It actually, uh, it's for Baby Yoda. You know, if you've been watching The Mandalorian. Oh. Um, this is what he, what, he, what he rides in. No, it's it's like uh, this semicircle, uh, basically mic holder. Um, you probably can't see because of the colors, but... Um, it, it's just this uh, right semicircle that kind of surrounds you and deadens all the sound um, when you sing into it. So it's it's just a great uh, thing to record vocals with. Um, so that is awesome, and uh, I'm grateful to have it here. It will be used for all the backups that I track for this record. Minus sure. minus the beer burp. So so no no. Uh, no. You're you're right. <laughs> Now it does, it totally looks like the Baby Yoda traveling thing, which I know. You know we, we, I I have a feeling like we watch like all the same shows because you're like hitting all of them that I watch. Do you by chance watch Dude. the Vikings? Do you watch the Vikings? Because if you do that, that's like miss that one. No, no, I don't watch Vikings. Uh, my little brother's super stoked on that and has been watching uh, the whole time. Um, I probably should though. I think I think I'd get into it. it. You you second that? Oh, it's it is great writing in like having like done the actual uh, history, you know, into it. It's uh, it's it's fascinating. It's absolutely fascinating. And I would I would recommend the Vikings over Game of Thrones because the Game of Thrones just took a big giant shit on the front lawn the last three seasons, so. I know. Yeah, everybody has said that. I, I never jumped on the Game of Thrones train. I think it was it was just like, oh, this is just like softcore porn, <laughs> like the first <laughs> two seasons or whatever. And uh, it it wasn't really something uh, my wife and I gravitated towards. Although we just gravitated towards zombies and became obsessed with Walking Dead. Yeah, that. that was that was a good one. It just like I, I, I had to stop watching it because I would go somewhere and I'd be, I would start actually mentally preparing for zombies coming over the hill. I was like, oh, <laughs> fuck that show. It's fuck with my daily life. I ain't watching it anymore. But, you know, speaking of South Park, we brought up South Park earlier and they did a great parody on Game of Thrones. You're bringing up how it's uh, how it was. Uh, Game of Thrones was like soft, soft core porn to you. You remember the song yeah. that they had the the back the start the song it was wiener 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 wiener. <laughs> you remember that? Did you see? <laughs> so you like no. you like, like oh, so on point. Ooh. Oh god, that's so funny. Yeah, there's there's some good YouTube clips uh, about all the the boobs appearances <laughs> everywhere. 
<laughs> for sure for that show. God, that's funny. Well, well these oh. were not in the talking points for tonight, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> but they're good. All right, what's next, Fred? What, what are we doing? Uh, you know, <laughs> I think oh. this this goes uh, <laughs> this goes uh, uh, well on point for what we're talking about. Vanilla Shake. <laughs> Hell yeah. Awesome. I am so pumped for this guy. Um, it is uh, made by, by McKellar Brewing, which is a Danish uh, brewery. They they have a location in San Diego, and um, they are awesome. They If you ever see anything, they are more expensive, but it is, I'd say, 90% of the time worth the money. So... I see. It doesn't look like a vanilla shake. Definitely a uh, stick. I feel like we're getting into with this puppy. Man, um, this, it kind of smells like coffee. Yeah? Yeah? Is, is it on? Is it vanilla shake-like? And here we go. Oh, my God. Yes. Yes, it is. Damn. Wow. Damn, that is a vanilla shake. And it ends with the... Yeah, yeah, boozy um, coffee, like you were saying for sure. But yeah. man, that, on the nose, it's it's straight up vanilla. Wow, that's so cool. So one of my YouTube uh, members is commenting. Mm. Uh, Bruin Bruin says uh, Danish brewer, originally from uh, originally a high school chemistry teacher. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, I did not that. know that. That's very cool. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's what all monks are, you know? It's like monks and chemists and scientists and just figuring stuff out, and that's awesome. So from chemistry to a uh, beer brewer, that's and, sick. And as we have seen, based on Breaking Bad, that uh, math teachers can make a lot of things that will get you fucked up. So. <laughs> So this uh this, you are correct. this vanilla shake here though is not one of those. This is like a sipping this is a sipping uh real tasty uh it it is I don't think you, I don't think you could pair this with anything outside of maybe some mm. like a light dessert. But yeah. I mean it's still finishing on my palate. It's very nice. Yeah, it definitely keeps going. Uh 12%, so it's uh it's up there. For oh, sure. Yeah. It, it, it'll get her done, you know? Man. <laughs> oh, that's really good. Yeah, that, that'll get you I, in trouble. I definitely take that. <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, actually, uh, or, or talk to you about uh, your session with Killer Mike. I know, I think yeah. you've done, I don't know if you've done one with him, but I listened to one of the podcasts you did, and I'm a big fan of killer mike and run the yeah. jewels uh and a lot of the stuff they do but they actually just did a, a cool beer collaboration with uh 12 different breweries around mm -hmm. the world and they've all kind of taken uh this recipe and kind of put their own spin on it mm -hmm. and this brewery in san antonio actually weathered souls uh is one of those 12 breweries so i'm super stoked that you know run the jewels is recognize that brewery um especially um gosh where is that you know, with this guy uh, black is beautiful um that movement that they mm -hmm. did to get over 1100 breweries on board to support uh, uh everything going on in our culture via police brutality mm -hmm. and um you know raising money for black owned businesses and all of that and they were the ones to start it and they they're literally five miles from my house and I, I couldn't be more That's proud awesome. of San Antonio, you know, for, for doing something so cool to get the brewery yeah. community behind, you know, people that are hurting and um, yeah. Yeah. W want to be heard and why not, you know, uh, do something cool and, and um, you know, spread it through, through beer and through conversation that can happen, you know? So it's really, well, neat. and I, I'll say that I think that, um, uh, you know, my time with Killer Mike, when I, I've spent some time with him after that, and a lot of his, like, the people that are close to him, what I have learned about him is that he is genuine. Like, there's not a, 
you know, with a mm. lot of a lot of things that when you see like high profile and, and you're you're high profile, too. So, uh, you know, when you see high profile people like getting into getting into things, I think there's a natural reaction of like, mm, is that real or is that just a brand thing? And and that, you know, Killer Mike is one of the most real people I have ever met. I'm not just talking about like celebrities i mean he's real and yeah. what you see is what you get and he's uh you know in in my interview with him he said uh i don't want to be anyone's like um you know i kind of said you like I, I told him i was like you you know you're you're the leader of a movement not like the yeah. movement like right now and he said yeah. i i don't want to be a leader you know and but you he's like if i'm going to be your leader then you need to have to you need to accept that i'm going to smoke weed every day and i'm going to yeah. strip clubs <laughs> <laughs> I remember him saying that. <laughs> and and the, you know the thing yeah. is is like people want to uh, people we still kind of have this like 1950s mentality of what you know somebody in power uh, or you know so what somebody should do. And I, I when I when I put Killer Mike on, when I've talked to other people about like racism and everything, I got a lot of lot of like emails, comments, unfollows of people saying like mm. stick to whiskey, stick to whiskey. And mm. you know, it's the same that you mm. see this the athletes doing. And and I think that that we are, you know, if we can't have uncomfortable conversations about things, we can't move forward. And you know, Killer Mike is is not shy of having those uncomfortable conversations with anybody. And I think that right there is a trait that all of us need to have because what's happening is people are closing the door on the opposite side, and so they're never going to hear what their opposition says, and they're living in a bubble. And we're, you know, culturally, for God's sake, we really are getting ourselves more separated than we are connected. And I believe yeah. that I believe that having a drink – can mm. open a lot of doors not getting drunk and passing out in a on, on a concrete in the middle of a mud puddle but you know having a drink and a conversation can go a long way to like helping our country but you know no you're right and i really connected with that point when you guys were talking uh basically saying it's like if our leaders you know can get together over some drinks and just have conversation Learn about each other's lives. What's really going on, you know, yeah. aside from other struggles that, yes, those things are important. But at the end of the day, it's like, man, you're a, you're a human being yeah. and I'm a human being. And what we go through on the daily is real. And let's let's talk about that. You know, let's yeah. let's have this experience um, and let's let's grow. Let's learn. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm Dude, all about cheer, that. Cheers I, Cheers indeed, my friend. Yeah. Now definitely. we do we do have a very interesting comment that came up in the chat. And um, mm -hmm. you know, here we are talking and drinking beer the whole time. And <laughs> Abyss and Abyss uh comments uh on YouTube, you guys are gonna have to pee so badly. Ah, yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> uh not yet, but it you know, if uh, we're we're two thirds of the way through. I think we'll be good. Uh, you know, I can't speak for Fred, are, but I think so. We are trained professionals. I'll say yes. that, Abyss. I'm I'm a trained professional, and my bladder <laughs> knows to take a break when I'm on camera drinking. <laughs> there you go. That's right. Yeah, get out of the way. It's the same way. This is so funny, but with touring, it's uh, man, you're sorry for a word or whatever, but my like my butthole just learns. And my digestive system just learns that it's like, you know what? You will not have to go poop for the next 15 hours or whatever it is from when you go to bed to when you wake up in the next city. And it's like, okay, cool. I got you, you know, and it just, it just learned. And to where it's like, I'm at home and I'm, I'm on the regular, like I wake up and I'm going to go to the bathroom. You know, I eat breakfast. I'm going to go to the bathroom, lunch, bathroom dinner bathroom i'm pretty much a regular guy i drink a lot of coffee too so that definitely helps things you know go through 
<laughs> this, so uh, this is uh, this is beer and bathroom talk with Fred yeah. and Fred <laughs> Well, we are being honest and real. Everybody farts. Everybody poops. <laughs> so, all right, I, I'll give you I'll give you my best. Like it's actually really gross bathroom story. Uh, I I was in the army for nine years, and yeah. one one of um one of the things that you had to do is you had to take your M sixteen everywhere. You have to take you you know you cannot leave. Um, you 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 sleep with your gun or your weapon. You take it with you to the bathroom. Well, uh, when I was a when I was a private, um, a fella dropped his M sixteen in a toilet and by the way these are the military toilets outdoors are basically like a an 1852 uh, outhouse with a yeah. trough underneath and it's like it's like a pool of like ugh, the absolute yeah. worst oh man he dropped his m16 in there oh. and the and the the sergeants made him get in there and get it out himself so oh. Which, by the way, That's I'm pretty sure it was learned. illegal. Yeah. So. Yeah. So there's. It's like in Some Dog Millionaire or whatever, you know, and see him crawling through the poop. Oh, God. And we lost like 20 viewers within like the. Span- <laughs> within the span I don't know. Maybe poop. we gained them. <laughs> if we can't talk about. If we can't talk about bathrooms, folks, I don't know. Yeah. What, I don't want to talk to you. That's right. Yeah. So we let's, do let's we do real. have uh we do have another one. We have two more coming up. We have lunchbox treasure lunch lunchbox treasure and then the uh Prairie Artisan Ales birthday bomb. Yeah yeah. Yeah, let's do um let's do the lunchbox treasures. I'm very excited about this one. It's hard going after the vanilla shake. I will say that. And uh, Mc- McKellar knows how to do it. That's for sure. Um, these dudes from a perennial uh, are, are super sick. And it should be pretty tasty, too. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I've, I've read up on these guys a bit. And this oh. beer is... Pretty well rated. Pretty, wow. pretty so, tasty. This is an imperial stout with marshmallows, vanilla beans, cinnamon, and nutmeg. Ooh. Oh wow. Yeah. Damn. Damn. That's good. This is that's this, really good. This is dessert. This is dessert. This is. You, you, <laughs> You yeah. know, you, you, you're taking this over the creme brulee or the fatty oh. McCheese pie or whatever it is that you're going to uh, have. Um, it's it's straight up a dessert. Yeah, that's really good. You know, there was a lot of booze in that vanilla shake. And in this guy, now oh, it's seemingly invisible um, in a good way. Um yeah, it's it's a great dessert brew. A lot of cinnamon. There's a nice light marshmallow fluff type of goodness going on. Mm. Oh. Beer is good. <laughs> good. Uh, right? Yeah. So, uh, um, and- Brittany, Brittany Fritz on uh, Facebook is saying, "Since when do my favorite bands do a uh, beer tasting live? This is so awesome. So you might, this might be a good chance to tell everybody again, like how often you're going to be doing these beer tastings and how they can find out about them. Definitely. So, Craft Shack is an awesome place to where you can get all of these beers that you've seen us have." Um, just search my name or the band name and they'll pop up. It happens once a month and via the app, this is normally an exclusive inclusive thing we're kind of doing, but since Fred is awesome and uh, we wanted to kind of get it out to everybody kind of, Hey, here's what's up. Here's what we're doing. Um, And if you want to see more of these, 
download our app, be involved, see what the few is all about. Um, so yeah, that's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are having a little bit of a lunchbox treasures here. And <laughs> oh goodness. <laughs> uh, this really uh, is this is really sweet. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's very sweet. You are, have, are there, I, um, I have to be in the mood for this one. I, I just can't open this one and drink it. Okay. This, yeah. This I'm, is a mood whiskey. Okay. I'm much more of a sweet guy. I do have a strong sweet tooth. Um, so I'm I definitely gravitate toward dessert beers um a lot and get really excited about, you know, Girl Scout cookie beers and and just crazy things that come out. Um, my, my grandmother, who's 100% British, uh, would just, golly, eat nothing but chocolate and sweets all the time. And I'm pretty sure that she lives on through me, definitely. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God rest her soul. Um, now, is, is, uh, there, would, is, I, is there a beer that we've tasted that you want to go back to? Because I've got hmm. two beers that I want to go back to that I'm craving, and that's the Megadeth beer from Unibrow, and then the uh, a Wasp of Bees. Like, I'm going to go back to those right now and see how they feel on the palate. Okay. That's awesome. That's cool. That's definitely a uh, – man, you are mixing. I like this. I suppose I can do this too. Hmm. I mean, yeah, that Megadeth still great. Yeah. Beaver. Yep, yep. Nice buttery, peanutty goodness. Yeah, I mean these are all these are all really good beers so far, man. Um, definitely a fan. Uh, I was gonna ask you, um, crap. Oh, uh, I recently just had my first uh, peanut butter whiskey. Uh, tell me your thoughts Screwball. on the whole peanut butter movement. No, it was a uh, okay. Rebel Stoke. Um, okay. All right. Well, you you apologize for using words earlier. I will apologize in advance, and if you get offended by bad words, now ah, may be ah. the time to leave. <laughs> peanut butter, peanut butter whiskey is 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 like to me. It's I'm like not... it's like it's like fermented goat piss. It's just not. <laughs> there, there's just it, it it smells awful. It tastes chemically <laughs> off. And, you know, whiskey was not meant to be flavored. Its flavoring is the fucking barrel. Vodka was meant to be flavored. So if you want to come up with a, a, a cream puff, uh, you know, doughboy vodka, knock yourself out. That's what vodka was intended to do was to be flavored. Whiskey, yeah. like these flavored whiskeys, you know, they were all, they were the, um, everybody was all over them between 2012 and 2016 because and there was kind of like this race to to like capture the you know the frat boys and the sorority parties and mm. fireball came out like a freaking rocket and they just owned yeah. the category and once fireball owned it everybody started pulling back and then Screwball mm. comes out of nowhere with a with a peanut butter flavored whiskey, and you hear people say, "Well, it's meant to go on ice cream." Look, if I want something to fucking go on ice cream, it needs to come. You know, it it, it I I don't buy things. I don't buy alcohols to put on my fucking ice cream. I just don't. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, make make I, a syrup if that's what you're gonna be. But it's like, um, it, it's I hate I hate them. I hate them. I hate it. I hope no, I, I hope I that's was, okay. Yeah, that is good. Um, because I was actually going to say that I'm not a fan so far. I don't get it. It it's unbelievably sweet, even though like I really like sweet things, mm -hmm. but it was just it's just really weird, and it's only kind of like reminiscent of peanut butter, um, as to where it's like, oh man, in beer. I mean, we we just had this peanut butter uh mexican chocolate beer and it was it worked really well and weathered souls actually does this awesome like uh 
lunchbox beer type of thing, same, similar to uh, lunchbox treasures. Um, the brown bag lunches is what it's called. And it's like graham cracker, mm. peanut butter, jelly. Sounds kind of ridiculous, but oh man, the, the, the scent from it, just like, oh, that's straight up peanut butter. It's nice. It mixes well with all the flavors. Like, yes, it's it's what you want ultimately. But I was let down, you know, when I when I tried this whiskey and you being a whiskey aficionado, I was curious to hear what you felt about a lot of peanut butter whiskey. And if you if you feel you've tried enough of them to say uh, from what I'm gathering that it's well, terrible. I, I will. <laughs> I, I will. It's so basically uh, there's a chemical imbalance with with uh, with with whiskeys that are flavored. Um the the tannic the tannins uh really throw things off and uh, if we had a really good comment in here i think it was for me uh hmm. from from someone's been commenting all night so i want to make sure i bring them to the, to everyone's attention brutality speaking podcast you don't think it was oh, Evan Williams John. or jack with the various flavors they made now i there was basically there was like an arms hmm. race to capture the uh to capture the crowd for flavored whiskey and mm. it, it was all about branding. It was all about branding. And Fireball mm. did not have brands associated with it. And so they were came out of the gate as being new and sexy and everything. Also made with Canadian whiskey, which I think does a better job with a, a flavoring component. American yeah. whiskey does not do well when you add flavors to it because it has so much tannins to it from the new charred oak barrel, whereas Canadian whiskey is going into used barrels. So those barrels are worked up. They're worked through pretty good. And so I feel like, you know, the Canadian whiskey that's being used in Fireball is actually – Fireball – I respect Fireball from a business perspective. I don't personally like it, but if I was a 22-year-old shithead, I'd probably <laughs> been drinking it on the on, on the steps of the Delta Chi, you know, fraternity house. Right, uh, yeah. But – so, so that's my thoughts there. Um, now we did have another comment in here from uh, someone on YouTube. Uh, Richard Stein comes in, and he's asking, uh, and then I'm assuming this is your hot sauce, but he's wanting to learn more information about the Burning Witch hot sauce. He's very interested. Absolutely, Ben has hit the jackpot. It's awesome. Uh, I like flavor, and it has lots of flavor, and it has a great spice. Um, I'm not typically I bow out when it's like anything habanero, but this is probably like in the realm of, you know, salsa you get to where it's like habanero is hot and it's, it's hot, but it's a different hot. It's sneaky, you know, it's witchy and it, it kind of creeps up. It's a back of the throat spice to where as you live your life, you kind of understand, you know, there's a lip spice, there's a tongue spice, and there's kind of a back of the throat spice. It's more the back of the throat. It mixes great with soup, with noodles. I'm really impressed. I don't just say that because I love Ben. I actually hate Ben lots of the times, but I hate Johnny Dan too, all equally. <laughs> um, and they hate me just as much and love me just as much. Um, that's the it's that's a, like that's like the story of every great band ever, right? Right. Like, I mean, if, <laughs> do, you, do you all like when you're like going to like, uh, you know, like what when you're coming up and you like you get your first manager? Do they like give you a manual and say, okay, bass player, you're really supposed to hate the drummer, but you love the lead singer and you get along with the guitars? I mean, do they give you a book? I mean, how does that work? I don't know. That's awesome. Yeah, there's totally a book. Um, it's a Barnes and Noble right now. Yeah, it's on sale for Christmas, and you can get it, and you can learn all you need to know about being in a band. No, um, it's just being on tour. Like, and I'm sure you can relate with, you know, being abroad, being in Iraq, to where yeah. it's like you had your boys, to where it's like you fucking love those guys. And you'd give anything for them, and then they pissed you off. <laughs> you know, it's like mm -hmm. you, you learn the like the small things about them. That it's like, oh, he's such a dummy, uh, and I hate when he does this and does that. It's proximity. Living in a hallway does that to people. You know, it's like I'm, I'm tired of smelling your farts. You know, and I'm the one that everybody's tired of smelling my farts. You know, if I'm being honest. You know, you, are you? Are you <laughs> 
So we're going back to. By the way, we're going back to the bathroom conversations, everybody. So. Oh Lord. So what? So you. Uh, and by the way, Je- Jennifer Eidson says, you know, we, we love Mark. So I think people like this candidness out of you. But you know, are oh, yeah. what, what's making you gassy though? I'm curious. Is is it like too much like dairy? Is it the beer? We got to figure this out here. That's a good question. I think it is the dairy. I love ice cream. I love sweets, but they don't always agree with my system. And, um, you know, it uh, can have an effect. But I I must say, it's like I go through phases, and I think we all do, to where it's like, man, you should just stay away from me for a while. <laughs> or, uh, or it's like I don't have any issues, and it's like it smells like roses. I mean, not really, but – yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> well, uh, I have so I have a thing for eggnog, and eggnog oh, comes. Yeah. yeah, I love me some eggnog. My wife will kick me out of the fucking house when I have eggnog. Dude, my wife hates eggnog too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. We need to hang out, Fred. You need to come to San Antonio. I need to hang out in Louisville. I, I I'll tip- bring my kid. I typically you know, I'm in San Antonio every year for the San, uh, San Antonio cocktail conference, and Damn, yeah, and uh, I'm a big fan of like the Esquire. Um, I love uh, there, there's a, there's a restaurant. There. I'm, the name is escaping me, but it's got like all of these like hams hanging up and um, <sighs> in like the old in the yeah. old brewery area. I can't think of it, but it's so good. Pearl. Yeah, the Pearl, Pearl Brewery, Pearl, right? The Pearl Brewery, and then there's like a really nice restaurant there. The guy was up for yep. a James Beard. Can't think of it, but it's so awesome. I, now we, I we think do I, have, I know what you're talking about. Yep. We do have one. We got the the Prairie Artisan uh, Birthday Bomb. Uh, this yep. is the, this is the one. Before we went live, you said this is the one you were most looking forward to. Yeah, you know this is uh, the. It's a barrel aged beer just because you're you're a whiskey guy and uh you know it's been aged in whiskey barrels or bourbon barrels. Um and it's uh it has a really cool uh like spicy finish. Um and and I enjoy that. Um it's been a while since uh I feel like I, I first got into these. My older brother introduced me to uh the, the bombs. They have so many ones. Um but the thing that's similar it's like bomb it's hot so it's the end is kind of spicy so that that's what i dig it's not my favorite beer but uh prairie artisan ales makes great beer again you can get a lot of this probably anywhere near you at a grocery store at a liquor store a bottle shop or on craft shack you know you can make it happen but yeah let's uh let's do this i'll so pour some way, goodness by the way mark uh, I may yep. be getting in trouble when I get home. My wife's on the live stream, and she oh, just no. called me out and said, "So gross." Oh, why did she say so gross? Uh, probably me. That, no. You don't have to apologize for anything. No, it was <laughs> it was my it was my affinity for the eggnog, right? You know, and oh, uh, gotcha. Yeah, in fact, I just killed a bottle, and and I had to get kicked out of the house a time or two. So I think I was <laughs> bringing back some bad memories for her. Of recent oh, jeez. They're great. I mean, God bless my wife. She accepts me, you know, and uh, all the good, all the bad. And uh, there, there, there can be a lot of bad sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, cheers. This cheers. is uh, the bomb, the birthday bomb. Here we go. It smells great. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm. damn. Mm. Mm. Man, that's just velvet on the tongue right there. It is. Yeah, real velvety. Um, yeah, the chili peppers are subtle there right at the end. Um, That's really good. That's really good. Mm. <laughs> I love this. Awesome. Good. I, I was going to say, with your experience with uh whiskey and bourbon mm-hmm. oh man i can you do you do blind taste tests do you like oh yeah you yeah yeah. To, uh, yeah okay yeah, that's what i do yeah yeah 
That's awesome. And by the way, Nick, Nick Falls was commenting that I need a snifter. It's correct, everybody. I came ill-prepared uh, because I am stocked to the gills with whiskey glasses and not good beer glassware, so I need to get that <laughs> rectified. <laughs> and by the way, all, all these beers can be purchased at Craft Shack. Yes. So you can go check out craftshack.com. Also, uh, I haven't announced this yet. So the people watching it here tonight, I'm also doing something with Craft Shack. I've got a, yeah. I got a whiskey club. I'm starting a whiskey club over there. Heck yeah. That's so, awesome. I'm very excited about that. Yeah. Way to go, Craft Shack. Way to go, Clay, for being awesome. Thanks, Clay. Uh, we love awesome? you all the, the time. <laughs> Diana is saying that it's cured in San Antonio. Oh, I see that. Yeah. The, uh, uh, what does that mean? That's that's uh, the what, that's the res- that's the restaurant with the hams hanging up. In the oh old, yeah, in the old Pearl uh, Brewery. You know. Gotcha. All right. Very cool. Thanks, Diana. So, based on this uh, blind taste test, like, would you be able to tell the type of bourbon, like the type of uh, that? That's hard, man. That's a reach. Like the barrel. Like, oh, does your you tongue, know, is your tongue that strong, Fred? There, tell me. <laughs> I will tell you that I can spot four roses barrels, and I can spot, uh, you know, Jack Daniels wow. barrels from when it comes to beer. Uh, the okay. rest, of, the rest of them are kind of very similar. Okay. Gotcha. That's hard. Yeah. Uh, I would say I would you... say this probably went into a. Um, This probably went into. Hmm. Uh, I don't fucking know. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I I just know it's not it's not over, it's not overly done. Um, do they have it on here? Because what happens is uh, the no, distilleries block them all the time, of hmm. of uh because of um. You know, trademark stuff, but yeah. They love to I, sue each I, other. I could be wrong, actually. It might not be barrel aged, which uh, I feel really bad about. Um, I'm sure somebody can fact check me and make it happen, um, and which I'll look up later. Um, most of their stuff, most of their stouts are definitely barrel aged, and mm-hmm. uh, they they definitely uh, have have a lot of amazing brews. I actually had one with my nephew earlier uh uh noir prairie noir which was really awesome and a bourbon paradise uh which was delicious too Jeez, good stuff so many beers out there so little time so uh, many beers I, I, so many whiskeys I know. you know i wanted to ask you uh so for on on uh for beer for untapped mm-hmm. you know it's like okay you can check into this beer and you can find out that uh you know this is what it's rated this is where it's located like oh man if i'm in the uk and i don't know the area i like look up okay pubs near me because there's so many in freaking london it's like where can i go and actually have a good beer Mm -hmm. um that i enjoy and not just crap um and it's so helpful is there something like that for liquor or for whiskey uh, I will tell you that I tried to create something, and as you ah. have as you have probably learned with your own app, it's very difficult doing apps. It's they're not easy, you know. Mm-hmm. And yeah. and I and I came through a few snags, and I just decided, you know, I was in beta, and I just decided to like you know move on. Yeah. And um, and and so like there's not the 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 best app that we have in in the space is probably distiller um and it's not necessarily about where you can find it it's more about what what, it's a kind of like a more of a collective review um but you have to remember too that there are really nine distilleries creating the majority of american whiskey and Mm. it's a lot easier to do a brewery um than it is a distillery and hmm. distillers are about brands and it's not the category of beer just it just moves more and so like it's not 
uh, a brewery can there can be there can be 20 breweries like um a, a place like um uh North Carolina Ashland is it Ashland I think Ashland North Carolina Asheville 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 North Carolina has 20 30 breweries you know and you could not do that with a distillery you know because there's a lot of there's there's a lot more volatile compounds there's a lot more water sucking uh you know from the community um so distilleries you know it, it it's a it can be a burden on a community uh because there's so much stuff so yeah yeah uh base of all base of all says he just goes to the fred minnick show i like that. oh there you go <laughs> All right, that's how you know. Yeah, I, I, I do. I, I do have to work on the organization of like my of my reviews and stuff. But I, I got my best. I've got my best everyday bourbon coming up. Uh, that's gonna be Thursday. Ooh, gonna be a, gonna shoot. be a blind blind tasting face off. I'm excited about it. Okay, man, that's awesome. I, uh, I, so I get the blind part. Um. Tell, tell me more about that. Like, what is, uh, what's exactly happening on Thursday? So Thursday, I'll be, like, checking out all of these. Um, so I've been tasting throughout the year, and then I've got, like, a list of things that I've bought that I really, really like that I didn't have to spend a lot of money on. I did some blind mm. tastings on them previously. Now I'm throwing them all in a blind tasting, and we'll see who wins. And that'll be my winner. And they will go on to compete for uh, best uh, American whiskey. That's badass. That's really cool. Living the dream, Fred. Right? Like I, like I say every time we connect, <laughs> man, I'm I'm living the dream for real, for reals. That's good. You're right. You know, I was struggling um, uh, upon Thanksgiving into just having my own inner reflection of. Uh, what I can be grateful and thankful for this year. And it really goes, yeah, it just goes back to the basics. Like, man, like I'm just thankful. I have a job that I love and gosh, and uh, it was so great that our band went into recording and not touring when this hit. We're mm-hmm. okay. We're able to sustain our salaries and, and our lifestyles and everything. Um, I know many have been hit so hard and like i feel bad about myself into like it's nice to be able to go out and hang out with friends and go over here and hang out with you and 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 hang out with this guy and this guy um you know and and it's i just need to be grateful for for what i have i was having a hard time like thinking like what what do i have to be thankful for this year and it was hard like and more, I feel like I've been mentally, uh, for lack of a better word, challenged, mm-hmm. uh, which isn't, it isn't that, but this year, like more than ever before, we all hate 2020. That's obvious. Um, but just like the, the drain and, and the, the test that it's had on us this whole year, like I've had thoughts that I've never had before this year yeah and it's been it's been it's been really so it, it, it's it's been really hard and you know my my producer for my podcast um uh, is fighting covid right now and she's had it for a week and a half her fever just broke yesterday after having it for seven straight days uh Damn. She's got a cough that makes yeah. every single fiber in her body ache, and oh, God. and you know, like I, I, and we've we've a lot of us have known people that have had it and have died, and you know, yeah. it's a it it's been it has completely, you know, punched us in the gut, and and then all, all our reaction to everything, the restrictions on everything. Um, you know, puts us in the in the front line and center of a lot of you know complicated debates. Um, yeah. I I didn't think that you know 2020 would be the year that I would be listening to conversations about 
whether a mask is constitutional. To be honest with you, as we were rolling into 2020, oh. this was going to be a record year that I was going to be doing stuff with Metallica. I was going to be doing, um, you know, uh, I was going to have like a uh, a national um, hotel chain uh, bourbon dinner series. I mean, I, was, I had all these things lined up. And then wow. within a span of a few days, all gone, all gone. And then my wife Man. tells my wife tells me she's on the uh, at her hospital. She's on the task force for coronavirus. Oh, God. And I'm like, oh. I just think of all this like I'm going to be here. Like I might be the only income if she gets like sucked into the hospital or if she gets it. I mean, I I mean I just this was this has been. This has been a year that yeah. tests it tests you, and I mean every every day of your life is a test. But you know, Damn. you know, your your music, what you do, brings so much joy to people. And I I will tell you, um, more on more than one occasion, I've put on uh, "Let's Go to War" when um, mm. when it was time. You know, I mean this is this is. Um, that that song, all a lot of your a lot of y'all's music, man. It 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 resonates with people, and well, if even though you can't be out there and feel the energy, I will tell you, the what you do, how you have, uh, you know, handled, you know, this period. You've done a great, and I don't, you know, if you're beating yourself up, I'd say cut yourself some slack. And know that your music has helped a lot of people get through it. That's my that's my comment to you. No, no, I, I I appreciate that. And man, props to your wife, props to you, your family. It's hard. Just just being there and being susceptible it's, every day. It's, it's as they would say in um, <sighs> in Squidbillies, which is another one of those. Uh, cartoon <laughs> it's been a bitch yes. in a bitch boat <laughs> there you go there you go yeah that's oh. fitting that's that's the slogan for this year for sure no i mean man i know songs that have changed my life and how music has been there for me when nothing else was and i'm definitely grateful and blessed to be able to do it day in day out and to provide that solace, uh, that shelter for others, that's definitely a blessing. Um, right on, man. Well, we're get, we're getting heavy. Weird. We're getting heavy. I but know. That, that is that is uh, uh, that that is how it works, though. You know. Yep. Yep. It's it's how it and works. This... When you have when you have good drink, and you're with friends, you have discussions that lead to things, and like. Mm-hmm. And th- there's a mm-hmm. reason why there's a, the I love you, man. There's a reason why that exists, you know? Yeah, because it's a real thing, and you really felt that. Yeah. And that's that's important. And and cheers to that. Happy Thanksgiving, for sure, uh, to you, Fred. Thanks for being a part of this. Thanks for letting me be a part. Um, again, for everybody watching. Um, this has been the Fred Minnick show, a few good brews with me and, uh, yeah, we appreciate you and, uh, yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, now, there, Megadeth there are, wins. Me- Meg- Megadeth, Megadeth <laughs> wins for me. It, it starts, you, you go to who you are, you go to yeah. the, like, I, I like the clean. I like, I like the flavor in this. It's just, it's just uh, really, 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 really easy drinking. I, I like it. Yeah. A- after that, for me, it's gonna be the prairie. Prairie comes in second. I do find nice. that this was absolutely delicious. Uh, then Ooh, wasp of wasp bees. bees. Mm-hmm. But I think, but I yeah. also, I also think that on a different day. A different day, I would take the vanilla shake as my as my favorite. Uh, mm. When it when it comes to like what you like in a certain time frame, it's all about your mood and what what you're in the what you like and so forth. And then you know, 
I, I wanted to like the belching beaver more, but I just, mm. I, I just didn't. I, and I think it might be, I like peanut butter. I don't want to taste it in a liquid. So for that fact that belching beaver comes in oh. last, the treasure box or, or the lunchbox treasures comes in a very, like the, the, there's only one here that I wouldn't drink. And it's, in, oh. it's the belching beaver. Oh, it, the mm. irony, the irony is because I was so right? excited about yeah. so, belching beaver, belching beaver. And it just didn't, right. you know, it just didn't do it for me. Um, yeah. and it was in it. And it's like, I don't like the peanut butter whiskey. I don't like the peanut butter, Mexican chocolate, peanut butter beer. So maybe that says something more about me that I've got a thing against a uh, peanut butter liquid. But uh, this was an excellent lineup, man. If you all are not checking out uh, Mark's uh, selection at Craft Shack, go check that out right now. Unfortunately, YouTube prohibits us from putting links in the <laughs> chats or descriptions yeah. to yeah. for the sale of alcohol. But if you can do your due diligence, you can go check it out yourself. Just go to CraftShack.com and um, you know search for Mark's name or nothing more and you're not going to go wrong. You're not going to go wrong. That's for sure. There you go. There you go. Well, That's Mark, awesome. um, is there anything that you want to say before we close out? Uh, you know, uh, this happens monthly. Fred's happens all the time. You know, there's he's got so many episodes. I've enjoyed going and listening to his podcast and learning more about whiskey and especially seeing artists that I love and that I appreciate and him just having a conversation with them through drink. Yeah. And it's, it's really cool. It means a lot. Check that out. Um, you can download our app, uh, via the app store, blah, blah, blah. Craft shack is awesome. Fred's awesome. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Sunday. Fun day. Um, let's get back to work Monday. <laughs> right. so i uh so thank you for that mark uh my next uh guest on the podcast is ludicrous so ludicrous ludicrous did something to a whiskey that i would never do he drank straight from a fifteen thousand dollar bottle he just picked it up and goes man that's good oh my god yeah that's so cool but i watched ludicrous, that snoop dog thing that they it was like the five million dollar, like uh, just like a, a taste or no, it's maybe it's two chains, or something. And it, I don't know, it's this crazy TV special thing that uh, Sarah, my wife, was into, and it was I couldn't believe it. Like like just for a shot, it was like five million dollars, or something stupid like that. Wow, that sounds. Um, was it the seed of Jesus? I mean, Jesus, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah, yeah, Jesus. <laughs> no, right. Uh, that's that's wild. That's cool. Check Fred out. Check out Ludacris. That's awesome. Props, man. Ludacris. That's Cheers, cool. man. And go to RepealDayExpo.com to go to get more information about that upcoming event. But. Uh, Mark, it was. Mm -hmm. I'm such a big fan of Nothing More as as I interviewed. I interviewed uh, Johnny, you know Johnny Hawkins, lead singer of Nothing More, earlier this year, and I told him how big of a fan I am and how much your band meant to me. And it's Damn. just so exciting Thank to you. continue, like you know, you know, this friendship and to have a drink with you guys. Uh, I I really mean it. Like you all, there's many great things ahead for this band. You all are you are still very young, and you're you're. I mean, you're in all kinds of commercials and you're all kinds of like sports stations. Like you got, you got the sound, you got the hit, mm -hmm, you got mm -hmm. more to come, man. It'll be good. Cheers. Definitely. Yeah. I love overcome. Cheers. Be safe, man. everybody. Be, be safe, everybody. Remember <laughs> vodka sucks. Vodka sucks. <laughs> vodka sucks. I agree. I concur. Awesome. Woo!